Good morning. Hello. How are you all today? Hi. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you today. Look at this. There's crawling out of the woodwork like little ants. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Well, I have a question for you guys. Okay. Have you ever just been hanging around, sitting in your seat or standing in line or eating in the cafeteria and somebody did something or said something to you that was just out of nowhere, really mean? Anybody? No. Sometimes? Nobody's ever been really mean to you? No. Well, lucky you. Wow. It's happened to you? Yeah. Sometimes. Molly is my sister. I know. She is. All right. So put your hands down. There are times when people say things or do things, and we didn't even deserve it. We were just sitting there, and all of a sudden, they were just mean, right? Or we see somebody being mean to someone else, and, and they were just being mean. Do you, ha do you have any idea? Why are, why are people sometimes mean like that? Because maybe they're just trying to ignore you, yeah. Maybe they got that from their parents, yeah. Maybe they're jealous. Okay. Maybe someone's mean to them, so they decided to be mean too. I have a new friend at my school, and he drinks people's water. Oh, he drinks their water? That's so not nice, is it? What else? Why might they be mad? They might not know. Maybe somebody didn't teach them how to be nice. You know what? Have you guys? Oh, yeah. What, what about you? You have an idea? Yeah. What? I know that's your brother. Yeah. You know, sometimes, have you guys ever, like, been a little bit cranky and maybe mean to your parents when you were hungry? Anybody? We it's like definitely hangry. Yeah, you're really tired or really hungry, and, and so you, you say things that you don't mean or you do things that you don't mean. All right, that's good. Lots of good examples. You guys are so smart. Now listen here. I have some very important life skills for you, okay? Something really important that I want all of you to remember all the time, okay? Sometimes when people are hungry or they've been treated badly themselves or they're sad or they're angry or they're tired, they say things and do things that they don't mean. And you know what? It's not about you then, is it? It's not about you. It's nothing you did or said. It's not anything about you. It's just about them. And so the best thing we can do is to continue to love them and care about them. Now, that doesn't mean that if someone is mean to you, you have to just put up with it. And if someone does something to you, you have to say, oh, just keep on doing it, right? You don't know, that's not true. And if you need to get help from someone to help that not happen again, that's okay. But it doesn't mean you can't love them in your heart and wonder, I wonder why they're being mean. I hope that they're okay. I'm going to love them anyways, okay? So let's pray. And let's pray for those, yeah, let's pray for those people, okay? Dear God, we know that sometimes people do and say things that they don't really mean or they don't even know. Maybe they're mean because someone's been mean to them or they don't even know how to be nice. Maybe they're just in a bad mood. But God, help us to love them anyway. Help us to know that behind every mean act of a person is someone who is really sad or lonely or angry and that the best thing we can do is love them. God, help us not to condone their behavior but to love the person anyway. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today's gospel is another one of those, the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> right? 
But I think we can, I think we can manage this one today. I think we can work through this. Um, before we do that, though, let's go back to uh, a few weeks ago, okay? We're going to just take a little journey over the last several weeks of our gospel lessons. We've heard a lot of lessons, numerous lessons from Jesus about what the law is and about how we should understand the law and about how that means we live out the law, okay? And so um, our first lesson was from Mark 7, and he's talking about um, what truly defiles because the Pharisees are, you know, they're, they're just really stern about keeping the law because in order to follow God, you're supposed to keep the law. And so these disciples aren't washing their hands all the time before they eat, and that apparently defiles you. And so they're really upset about this, and they're questioning Jesus, why aren't you making your followers do this? And so Jesus responds by saying, is it what we put in? Is it dirt on our hands that truly defiles? Is it following this particular law, or is it what's in our heart? I mean, what does it matter if your hands are a little dirty if your heart doesn't love God purely and you're just going through the motions, right? So they're concerned with the letter of the law. They need to know that it's this or this. They, they get a little bit afraid of the gray, right? How we understand the spirit of the law. And the thing is, when things are gray, we have some fear because we can't control that. And so then we move on to Mark 7, and Jesus rejects the Syrophoenician woman who comes to him to have her daughter healed. Her faith is so strong that she says, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. She knows that it only takes a crumb. One little crumb, just a leftover, not something that anybody wants to eat for her daughter to be healed. Now, she's a Gentile. And in healing her daughter, Jesus shows that he has actually come for the whole world, not just for the people of Israel, and that her faith is very strong. And so we can't control who God accepts, right? But that's really hard sometimes, because sometimes we're like, that person? Really? Come on, God. It's hard, and we can't control that. In Mark 8, Jesus asks the disciples, who, um, who do people say that I am? And they give him some answers, and then he says, who do you say that I am? And so Peter says, well, you're the Messiah. So they've gotten up to this point, and they're like the middle of Mark, and they're like finally like, okay, the Messiah, you're the Messiah. So then Jesus tells them for the first time that he's going to die and rise again. And this, of course, makes no sense to them. They have finally gotten to the point where they see he's the Messiah, and he's going to save them. And now, what? You're going to die and rise again? That doesn't even make sense. They can't control how God does things, and so they're very confused. And that takes us then to Mark 9, where Jesus makes this prediction once again. And of course, they're still confused, but the last time somebody asked, you know, Peter got rebuked and told he was Satan, so they're like, yeah, I'm not going to ask. You want to ask? Somebody else asked, because I'm not going to ask that question. So they're really confused about uh, this fact that Jesus seems like all things are out of control, and they're, they're living in a little chaos. And Jesus reminds them that following him is not about power, because remember, in, in the midst of all this confusion, they start discussing, okay, well, who of us is the greatest then? And he reminds them that it's about the least of these two, and he picks up a child, and he says, this child is equal to you. We've got to enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, like this child. That welcoming the least of these is welcoming Jesus. So it's not about power. It's about looking out for all people. It's maybe if you have power, you're supposed to share that power, welcome the least of these, just as Jesus welcomed the Gentiles, those with unclean hands, those who don't understand and are confused, even after eight chapters of following Jesus. No one, no power or action of our own can control who's the greatest or make us the greatest. Now today, in the, in the gospel, the disciples are upset because they see people, not them, and they're out there healing others in Jesus' name. But they're not following Jesus and the disciples, you know, they're not going with them. And so they get all upset and they're like, Jesus, they're, they're casting out people in your name. What's up with that? And Jesus says, don't stop them. They're doing it in my name. They're not against us. They're for us. They're not taking the credit themselves. They're placing it right where they belong, with me. And 
what if people are to come to faith to believe in me because they've seen other people do this in my name? And isn't this the same thing that I asked you to do a couple months ago? I sent you out two by two to do this in my name. And, and, and even in our Old Testament and our New Testament readings today, we hear about God using others for God's work. Um, in the Old Testament, we even hear God saying, would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that we could all do this. So essentially, the disciples are upset because it's the people that are healing aren't the ones in their crowd, right? They're, they're, not, they're the ones that are casting out the demons. And I imagine they're thinking to themselves, oh, what if they do it wrong? They don't have the training that we do. We've been following the guy. We know how to do the healing part. But in a way, I think there's probably some fear under there too. They probably don't even know what that fear is, but they're so invested in making sure that everything is going exactly as Jesus wants it to. They want so badly to control Jesus' ministry, and there it is. They want to control what's going on, and they fear that they can't control everyone out there that they come into contact with. Now, that's not necessarily a bad wish, is it? Of course, we want good things to happen. Of course, they want Jesus' ministry to go well, and they want people to understand what Jesus has come to teach them. They, want, uh, they know that as the main students, they probably feel a little bit responsible for making that happen, right? Like, oh, we've been taught, so we should probably get this right and teach others. But Jesus tells them, no, this isn't your job. And so when I read these brief verses, I'm reminded of a phrase my counselor has told me numerous times, you'd think it would stick and I would finally get, get it in my head. But when I'm overly angry or I'm sad or I just want the best for the world and I'm just frustrated because people aren't being nice to each other and why can't people just be nice to each other? He looks about at me and he says, Heather, it's not about you and you can't control it all. And I remember the first time he said that to me, I was so mad. <laughs> I was frustrated. I was infuriated. I'm sitting here and I'm watching all these things go on. I just want to make it better for people. I want peace and harmony and love, the best life for people. And then he'd say it again, hmm, it's not about you. And this is what Jesus is telling the disciples today. Hey, guys, it's not about you. Yeah, they're casting out demons in my name. And wouldn't it be great if something good happened because they were casting out demons in my name? Isn't it great that other people are starting to understand what I came here for, to care for all people? And do you really think you control everybody that's around here in this ministry and this journey? And even if they mess up, don't you think that God's control probably is bigger than all of it? Don't you think God will work this out? If you put a stumbling block in front of someone, like, say, making them stop, if by thinking that your hand or your foot or your eye has more control over the ministry of God, don't you think that's really making the ministry of God all about you and not about God? In other words, it's not about you. It's about your faith. Jesus is telling them to worry more about their own faith and their own walk than everyone else's. Let Jesus worry about everyone else. If they lose their saltiness, then they have no flavor again, right? Their own trust and their faith in Christ, then they, they, aren't, they aren't coming from the heart. They aren't um, able to actually show God's love because they've lost their own saltiness. So, therefore, letting go of controlling everyone around them and just grabbing hold of the transformation that God is doing with them, that the transformation that's happening within themselves, the work of the Holy Spirit... That's going to help them be salty. What I hear in all the stories that we've been reading um, and talking about in Mark is one thread. It's not about you. It's not about controlling everything. Pharisees and disciples, it's not about you. It's not about controlling everyone else. The perfect observance of the letter of the law. It's not about the status of being one of the 12 closest students to Jesus. It's not about you, people of God. People in the pew, it's not about you. It's not about your power or your observance of the law, or your control. It's not making sure that everyone else knows what is and isn't a sin or is and isn't saved. It's not about keeping the tabs and putting people in their place. It's about the least of these. It's about using our faith to go out and help others, make sure that others 
who don't have can receive. Those who are not welcomed are welcomed. That God's healing and love and forgiveness and God's death and resurrection are for the least of these and not just for the greatest. And it's about believing that even just a crumb, not what's meant for others, but just a crumb left over of what Jesus gives can trans someone's, transform someone's faith. Last thought, okay? Of course, it is about you. In communion, when you receive the bread and wine, you hear the words, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. We have two young people this morning who are going to be coming forward and taking their first communion. And guys, this is for you. It's for all of us. It is for you. Jesus came for all people to eat with us, to love us, to forgive us. Even the Pharisees and disciples, when they were confused and crazy, even us when we sin or we struggle or we think that we have control, everyone when we stumble and cause someone else to stumble. It is about us, but also remember, God's work through our hands isn't about us. It's about God working through people in faith and love. Amen.